Hi everyone, Katie here and welcome back to my channel. I am a home gardener in Zone 5B in the Chicago area if you're new here um, and thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about harvesting some of my cut flowers. When I set out to plant some of my raised garden beds, I knew I wanted some of those beds to be dedicated to a cut flower garden specifically flowers that I could use for drying. So I want to be able to create something this winter that reminds me of my summer and fall garden. And the best way to do that is to dry your flowers and create wreaths or other types of decorative things that you can put around your house. Now the two flowers that I grew this year that I was going to specifically to dry for wreaths are celosia and straw flower. So today we're going to be harvesting that. I believe we're a little late to the game, but since we're going to be drying them, I think it will be okay. Celosia, I have the plumed variety that I got from Baker Creek Seeds. We grew the rainbow sherbet this year, and it is looking beautiful, but some of it, or a lot of it, has actually gone to seed. Again, that is okay, but typically you do want to harvest these for dried purposes before they've gone to seed. The second one, the straw flower that I grew also from Baker Creek Seeds was the Tall Double Mix and they are beautiful and they are a variety and I'm going to show you guys in a second. With the straw flower, you want to cut off as much as you can of that stem. Alright, so we're going to get in the garden right now and we are going to start harvesting. Let's go. So this is the raised bed that we're going to be harvesting from. This was an old raised bed that I had created when I first moved into this house, I think like 10 years ago. Um, I did add another level to it um, to make it a little bit higher and everything has just done really well in this garden. I originally was going to cut these sunflowers for vases, but I just like the way that they look so I kind of left them alone. So this is some of the straw flower. So pretty. And they say normally you want to um, harvest them when they're still closed like this, but I think we'll be okay. And then here is the celosia. See, a lot of this has not gone to seed yet. Let me see if I can find a variety that has. Here we are. So you can see some of this has gone to seed. And that's okay, because I plan on saving these seeds and harvesting them and planting them next year, because they're so pretty. I just love the way that they look. So when I harvest, I'm gonna leave a couple of leaves, and that's gonna leave me enough room to bundle them up and to dry them upside down. Now that one had a bunch of flowers still on it, so I came a little bit higher. cut here because you can see there's other ones forming and I wanted to give those an opportunity to flower. So as an example we got let me zoom out. So we got these two right here. Probably gonna cut them right here. I'm leaving some here, just some of the smaller ones, mostly because I want these beautiful bees to have something to um, nibble on and munch on. And I got a lot here so far, so that's pretty cool. I could definitely make a reason for that. Now I'm going to start harvesting the straw flower. Now the straw flower, you want to get as much of this stem off as possible. Um, when you're harvesting it. Okay, so we are gonna just harvest as close as we possibly can to the flower cutting off the stem. Just like that. All right, so it's a little cute button. 
We're gonna keep going. This is probably the ideal way to trim it, or that stage. All these bees are like, don't take my food. All right, so this is all the straw flower I was able to get today. There's a couple more flowers that are starting to emerge, um, but it's too soon to pick them. I think all in all, we did good today. Solosha, we are going to want to make sure to bundle it up and tie it up and hang it upside down for two to three weeks for it to fully dry. So before I bring these inside, I want to bundle them up out here in the greenhouse because a lot of them still have little critters and little bugs on them. So I want them to have a chance to kind of get off before we take them inside. When you dry your bundles, you wanna make sure that they are stored in a warm but dry place. So this greenhouse is warm, but it's not dry. We have high humidity. It's been 70%, 80% for the past week. Temperatures are finally coming down. We had 100 the other day, but it's still too humid. So we're gonna bring them inside and dry them in there. Preferably a place if you have a fan that will help it dry out a lot quicker as well. So we're gonna to get to bundling them and then we'll bring them inside. So it's kind of funny because some of these you could already see the seed pods right here, these little black specks, oh there's a spider, um, coming off. So once these have a chance to dry out, these seeds you could probably shake out of the seed pods a lot easier. So I'm not gonna worry about them right now but I'm so tempted to kind of just put some aside. product I am gonna go inside and I'm going to hang these in my basement where it is nice and dry and probably put a fan on it I hope most of the bugs have had a chance to escape although as I was bundling them I saw little um, little spiders starting to crawl out but you know that's what happens when you have a cut flower garden so I'm gonna go hang these up but I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and you got something out of it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Your support means so much to me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and we will see you in the next one.